Can you trust Ancestry DNA relationship predictions? Besides her dad and me, these are my daughter's six closest matches. It looks like we have some aunts, an uncle, a grandfather or uncle, and a grand uncle or half uncle. But in fact, we have just one aunt, one uncle, and four grandparents. Number one and two are her grandmothers, and number three and four are her grandfathers. So why is Ancestry showing these as aunts, uncles, and grand uncle or half uncle? This can really confuse people. If you took a DNA test and found out that your grandmother shows up as your aunt, you might think something strange was going on. But even though Ancestry doesn't state it right here, these are actually just predictions. Before we go any further, here's the most important thing to understand. The amount of DNA two people share can never tell you what the relationship is. You always need additional information, even for a parent-child, where you need to know who's older and who's younger. So here again are my daughter's DNA matches. We first have her dad and myself, and then we have her first grandmother, Sharon, who is showing as an aunt. You can see that this doesn't say these are predictions, but they recently changed where these used to often say categories like close family to first cousin, and now is trying to predict an exact relationship, but it's often getting it wrong. We're going to talk about several tools we can use to get better predictions and understand this better. For Sharon, let's start by clicking on this word aunt. This is the page between Sharon and my daughter, and it says how many cinemorgans, so how much DNA they're sharing, and how many segments or how many pieces. Let's look in this box here where it says predicted relationships. It says we predict that these relationships are most likely to predict relationships we factor in self-reported ages and genders of both people. And so it says and here, but let's look at the frequency of relationships. So there's the 85% chance they're sisters, but it realizes they're not sisters and it probably sees at least one of their ages, but there's a 13% chance it's one of these relationships including grandmother and aunt. And it chose aunt for some reason instead of grandmother, but these are equally, as far as the amount of DNA, they're equally possible. And this is in fact my daughter's grandmother and not her aunt. Now you'll notice this button that says confirm relationship. I'm gonna give that a try and try to tell them that this is my daughter's grandmother and not her aunt. This grandmother is on her dad's side, so I will say next, because I'm sure of that. And here I can choose grandmother and it will update and then I can say confirm and close this. And now when I look at Sharon, it shows that she's on the paternal side, a grandmother. And so that's a way to fix this. Let's look at the next grandmother, D. D and my daughter share 1,819 centimorgans of DNA, but B and my granddaughter share 1,798. These are almost the same numbers. But B is actually my daughter's aunt and D is a grandmother. Like I said, the amount of DNA just narrows it to a group of possible relationships. It can't tell you those exact relationships. You have to actually figure out the relationship if you don't already know it to um, determine the relationship. So again, we can go in and correct this and I can click on uh, D and change that from aunt to maternal grandmother. We're going to look at a second tool that we often use when we're working with DNA matches to figure out the possible and probable relationships. And that's at DNA Painter. It's dnapainter.com. And we look at the shared Cinemorgan project tool, which is right here. I'm going to click here. And this is a free tool. I do have an account so I can do some other things. But this is created, this DNA Painter is created by Johnny Pearl. The Shared Cinemorgan project was created by Blaine Bettinger and people have donated their results or shared their results with that. And you can still do that today. And then Leia Larkin has done some of the probabilities and the mathematics behind it. Now we're gonna actually use the beta tools because that's the updated probabilities and it's the most current. And I'm gonna put in 2255, which is the amount of DNA my daughter and her grandmother Sharon shared. And this is similar to what Ancestry said. It's showing 52% sibling, 48% grandparent, grandchild, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, or half sibling. If you remember, Ancestry gave some pretty different numbers though. It said 85% sister and 13% in this category where we have 52 and 48%. That's interesting. But we know this is a grandmother. You could also get similar information by looking at this chart below where some of the cells and possibilities are grayed out because because they're not possible for that amount of DNA. 
and the ones left in color are the ones that are possible. My daughter's grandmother, other grandmother and her aunt shared right around 1,800 Santa Morgans. And when we look at that, we see that is a 0% chance of a sibling and a 100% chance that is a grandparent, grandchild, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, or half sibling. And in fact, one of those is a grandmother and one of those is her aunt. And so that falls in this category, or we can also look here on this chart to see what's possible. And the third tool I want to look at is called SEGCM. Now, this one is different because it also takes into account the number of segments that you share with somebody because male and female segment rates differ. And I could tell you more about that. If you guys are interested, let me know down below. But here you're going to enter not just the Cinemorgans, but the number of segments. So let's first start with Sharon. We can see the 2255 and it's 23 segments. So over here, I'm going to put 2255 and put 23 segments. Remember, she is a paternal grandmother. And let's see what it says. And this tool is best for very close relationships. Here we have with the 23 segment information that there's a 97.5% probability this is a paternal grandparent or grandchild. It's that relationship where maternal is almost impossible. It's very, very low. And so is half sibling. Full sibling is about 2.2%. So that gave us a much better prediction of the relationship than either Ancestry DNA or the Shared Centimore Project. Now let's look at the other two that were really close. The grandmother we're calling D and the aunt we're calling B. So I looked at grandmother D and this is my mother. So this would be her maternal grandmother. And it was 18, 19 Cinemorgans and 31 segments. So let's see what it says. Here it says that 51% chance is a grandparent, grandchild. And again, it's really understanding that this is on the maternal side, not the paternal side, because of those recombination rates of males versus females. So almost 50, over 50% 50 chance is maternal grandparent versus 0.6 paternal. But it could also be a half sibling on the paternal side. So again, this if I knew this was a grandparent, but I didn't know which side it was, this is quite helpful. And then let's do that aunt. Now the aunt is 1789. So about the same amount, but 49 segments instead of 31. It's a big difference. And let's look. So this is on the maternal side because it's mine. And you can see that grandma, uh, grandparent just disappeared altogether. And it's saying it's more likely a maternal aunt than a paternal aunt or a half sibling. Well, half sibling is actually a little higher, um, but that is very helpful. Besides using these three tools, another thing we can do is look at ages. And sometimes you know the ages of your matches, sometimes you don't. If they have a tree, you can figure it out based maybe on the parent side. So you're looking to see, are they about the same generation? Are they more like a generation apart, maybe 20, 25, 30 years apart? Or even more, are they 50, 55, 60, 70 years apart? And that helps you figure out these matches. And in this case, we would be able to see that Sharon and Dee, these two grandmothers, are quite a bit older. They're more like two generations than one generation or the same generation, where the aunt, who's B, is more just like one generation. So that's how age would help there. If we look at the shared Cinemorgan project, which I'm happy to teach a lot more about, I love teaching about this, so leave a comment down below if you'd like to learn more. But this row here is your generation. Here's you, your siblings, your first cousins, your second cousins. Those are all about your generation. Then uh, the row above you is your parent and their generation, your parents, siblings, who are your aunts and uncles, your older first cousins once and twice removed. I mean, sorry, your older once cousins once removed, a second cousins once removed. They're one generation older than you. And then we have your grandparent and their generation, your great aunts and uncles, your first cousins twice removed. We can also go one or two below. This is your children and their generation and your grandchildren and their generation. And so when you're looking at those ages, you can say, is this um, 20, you know, is this 20 to 30 years older? It's probably an older generation. Is it 30 to 60 years older? It's probably a grandparent generation or we can go younger. And of course that doesn't work in every family. You can have very large families with when they have lots of kids and maybe you have the oldest child and they, and it's a child of the oldest child, and it can really throw things off. But this is just something general to keep in mind, is the age of the two people. And so age can also rule out certain relationships. For example, 
18, 19 is how much my daughter shares with her grandmother. If I knew that the, that my daughter and this test taker were only 15 years apart, I could rule out that that's not a grandparent or a grandchild. So let's try this with one more, like a mystery match. And my cat, Rosie, has joined me here for this part. But this is Elsa. It's showing him as a half grand uncle, and he's not a half grand uncle. So let's see what we can find out. And Rosie loves to wrap around me. Let's get her settled. Okay, half grand uncle. Let's look at the possible relationships. It says there's a 77% chance that is one of these relationships from great grand uncle, half grand uncle. So something in here, which it had chose half grand uncle. There's a 14% chance of one of these relationships, a 5% of one of these, and a 2% of one of these, which I'm not going to read all of those. But one thing I want you to notice is this is 564 Cinemorgans. When you share less DNA with somebody, the possibilities of the relationship expand a lot. So up at the top, when you're sharing 3,489 uh, Cinemorgans with someone, there's very few relationships. Basically, it's a parent-child. This could be my daughter's father or her son. Or there's a slight, slight chance this could be the person's self or twin. But when we're looking at Elsa, there are a lot of possible relationships because this is sharing a lot less DNA. Here's DNA Painter at 564. And again, we have, this time we just have three different categories. And in fact, most of this category, when you see that cross, means it has a non-zero possibility, but it's outside of what has been seen. And so really the only thing is a second cousin here. But in this top category, we again have that half great uncle is what they're calling it. That was um, what they had predicted. And let's look at the seg CM. It was 564 and 21 segments. Let's see how this does. This is not a real close relationship. It's saying 39% first cousin once removed, 30% half first cousin, 10% great aunt, uncle, niece, nephew. Actually, I'm not sure where I would cut it off, but I would not use it for 564, something at this level. But going back, what we can use is age because Elza is actually now deceased, but he was in his 90s. My daughter is in her 20s. So it makes some things a lot more probable than other relationships. And in this case, you really just have to figure out who Elsa, who Elsa is and who he's related to. And it ends up that he is a great grand uncle, not a half grand uncle. He is actually related on both sides and he's a great grand uncle. So here's Elsa and my tree. And I show his dad as a Miller, his mom as a Moor. So if he's a full great grand uncle, he should be related to both the Millers and the Moors. If he was half, he'd be missing half. He'd either only be seeing the Miller side or the Moor side. So what I really need to do is check to make sure that Elza is actually related to both sides of the tree that he should be. So the Miller and the Moor side. And I just looked at some of his closer matches and we can see we're seeing the Miller side, the more, the Miller, the more. And so he is, in fact, related to both sides he's supposed to be. So he is a full grand uncle. So remember these key points. DNA amounts alone cannot predict relationships. Always consider ages. Use multiple tools for better analysis. And look for supporting evidence in trees and shared matches. If you'd like more DNA tips and genealogy updates, success stories from viewers, and a peek behind the scenes of my research, make sure you sign up for the newsletter below and check out these videos. See you next time.